Yeah. Good evening, everyone. So, see the first question. See the first question. What were the events that led to Suez Canal crisis? How does it? How did it deal a final blow to British self-image as world power? Just try this for a few minutes. Give the framework. Yeah. So basically, the Suez, Suez Canal is a very narrow canal, okay, which is connecting the Mediterranean Sea, okay, and the Arabian Ocean, okay, the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Arabian Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. It is connecting a very small strip of land, okay. It is connecting, and it is the extremely important passage of the world trade because. it is the shortest route through which the europe's cargo can reach towards the southeast okay if you see the world map for example the europe is here okay this is africa this is asia and this is southeast asia okay so previously it was like this the sea route was like this and coming to asia this is madagascar islands so it, they used to come to like this but because of this red sea and suez canal now they are cutting the time distance and coming like this here you have egypt basically it is under the it is adjacent to the egypt so it is cutting a lot of distance called cutting lot of time but because of the geographical constraint because of the geographical constraint the width of this canal is only limited and it cannot be expanded beyond this width and it is like only one or two vessels can pass on through this canal for any given point of time so this us canal was acting as a lifeline for british during the imperialism and lot of raw materials were procured from its colonies especially india and lot of final manufactured goods were dumped into these colonies but by the time of 1945 that is the end of world war 2 the scenario changed two prominent powers came into the picture usa and usa and ussr in 1956 what happened the egypt ruler called nasser who was driving the arab revolution the arab unity tried to declare suez canal as a national identity of egypt that means he declared suez canal as nationalized under egypt previously it was under the control of french but now when egypt was an independent nation he declared it as a national property of egypt so now whoever is passing through this suez canal has to pay certain tribute to egypt certain charge to egypt so this was immediately and instantly opposed by british so it came into touch with israel and other powers and tried to attack egypt so british and other powers tried to attack egypt for nationalizing the suez canal because it became a crisis when egypt has blocked the passage of suez canal by nationalizing it but by the time in this attack uno got involved the security council has passed a resolution asking british and israel not to attack egypt and also ussr supported egypt by supplying the man and the arms and usa also did not involve in the issue and did not support the britain in this process because of the worldwide pressure and also the support which egypt received from ussr britain had to withdraw from the suez canal issue 
previously a power which did not know that stepping back the power which ruled the entire world has now yielded to a small nation called egypt and because of the pressure of uno they could not continue the war and this gave a very big blow to the image of british on the world stage and its image as a power of the world and this issue is popularly called as suez crisis and it has dented the image of britain once for all and made the world realize that now there is no more britain as a world power and that is usa and ussr are the two prominent powers which are in picture clear yes yes good introduction yeah good this diagram is good explaining suez canal good good answer ravi yes see the second question the new economic policy of 1921 of lenin had influenced the policies adopted by india soon after independence evaluate the new economic policy so the new economic policy in 1921 of lenin has influenced policies adopted by india soon after independence evaluate so basically policies adopted by india after independence are basically the policies of jawaharlal nehru right so we all know that jawaharlal nehru had a socialist inkling by 1920s he has attended the communist conference in brussels in 1920s and he declared himself as a socialist so he was attracted towards the principles of socialism and communism and when india became independent so basically the new economic policy of lenin was implemented in 1917 he where he has come up with the three year plans three year plans to improve the economy and he encouraged the economy to have a mix of state control as well as the entrepreneurship he wanted a welfare state okay so the new economic policy of lenin okay in 1921 was basically to radically change the economic model of russia okay so in 1947 when india became independent so what it influenced from these policies of new economic policy of 1921 is the five year plans self reliance concentration on agriculture and industries okay then mixed economy mixed economy and welfare state welfare state okay so these are the important aspects which the india got attracted or influenced towards the new from the new economic policy of the communist communist state that is ussr okay but the important distinction between the new economic policy and india's economic model was that india had made a conscious decision to take these particular aspects forward in a permanent way in a permanent way whereas the new economic policy was a kind of experimentation in russia the ussr but in india the first 3 to 4 5 year plans were basically influenced by the new economic policy and thus this paved a slow but steady growth 
in Indian economy in making it self-reliant and also moving it towards the mixed economy. That is a combination of capitalism and socialism. Thus, you can conclude by saying that though India got definitely influenced from the new economic policy of 1921, it paved its own way in chalking out the growth model, which slowly but steadily moved towards a sustainable growth. Clear? Clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Mahalo no boy is more. Okay, you can write about the role of planning commission, okay, the other five year plans and the mixed economy. Okay, good. The answer is good, but you can write these points also, Santosh. Clear? Yes, sir. See the third question. Africa was chopped into states artificially created by accident of European competition. Analyze. Give the framework. Yeah. So, basically, Africa, as the question says, was chopped into various states artificially by accident of European competition. So, just a second. Yeah. So, basically, as the question says, it is true that Africa was chopped artificially into states. Basically, what is the reason European competition? So, what competition are we referring to here? Two things, competition of raw materials and the competition for markets. Because European imperialism was reaching its heights during the 18th and 19th century, especially in the 19th century. So, African was, Africa was chopped. And this particular partition of Africa is generally called as paper partition because there were many meetings within the European powers like Germany, France, you know, then Britain, all these powers came together and it is like you take this half, I'll take that half, you take these states, I'll take that states. So there was a kind of agreement between the European states, okay? The, though there were wars, the wars were very, very less when compared to other imperial wars. Once or twice they have fought, but mostly it was like, you know, a mutual understanding between Europeans and then it was chopped artificially for the benefits and interest and the selfish motives of the Europeans. Okay, basically this was for the raw materials, raw materials, This was for raw materials, okay? And this was for markets, okay? And, and then access to the natural resources of Africa, natural resources of Africa. Sometimes, you know, the Suez Canal and etc. So sometimes for waterways, 
and other connectivity of the African continent. In this context, you can mention certain colonies of, say, uh, Britain. Okay, with regard to the Britain, the colonies were the Egypt, Kenya. Okay, South Africa was Britain's colony. So you can mention few colonies like you know these were distributed among the uh, Britain. Then France, the Senegal, Senegal was part of the France colony. Germany, especially the Cameroon, Cameroon was part of the Germany. Okay, and the places like Eritrea, Libya were part of Italy, and Mozambique was part of Portugal. So this goes to show that. how the european powers have distributed various parts of africa and artificially converted them into the various states okay in this in this process they have ignored the identity of africa for their selfish motives okay and uh, sometimes this partition is called paper partition and then in the conclusion you can mention however in the 20th century with regard to the decolonization many african elites like enkrumah so you can bring that question here many african elites got educated with the same imperialistic attitudes and were exposed to the western education and started opposing these european powers and finally africa as a complete continent was decolonized long after the you know in the 1950s you can simply mention that so you can start with the attitude for imperialism and mention the decolonization aspect in your conclusion clear yes sir yes sir yes sir master You have written, Baskar. Is he there, Baskar? Baskar is in the class. So let him come to the class. Last time also he has not attended the class. Who else has written? Jitendra, you have written. No, sir. Hindu, Sri Ram. I saw him connected in the class. Why he has disconnected? Jitender. I think there is some Wi-Fi problem here. But he connected to the class, right? I am in classroom, sir. He is in room, so. Okay, Sri Ram, you can mention some of the colonies of various powers like Britain, France, Italy, as we discussed. Good, and then the conclusion can be slightly better. Okay, you can write about the decolonization aspect. see the last question what policy instruments were deployed to contain the great economic depression it is called the ged of 1929 so great economic depression take couple of minutes and give the framework yeah good santosh so it's a good uh, framework so basically the great economic depression of 1929 is a very big impact or jolt to the world okay not only to the america but to the entire world because we know by the time of 1917 the impact of capitalism started growing and the new power called america also came into picture by the end of world war 1 okay by the end of world war 1 it started coming into picture yes suman your framework also also is okay okay so basically what happened is there was a trust on this capitalist economic structure but this 1929 great economic depression suddenly made everyone question the relevance of capitalism and the you know boasting of capitalism so you can start by the introduction of what is this great economic depression and how it impacted the world economy the, the trigger moment was start of the falling of you know us markets and so on and coming to the main body part of the question you can give the reasons briefly though it is not asked you have to give the reasons for the falling of for the great economic depression what is the reason one is that 
there was too much of economic production in the domestic markets so the market for the final goods was not there the goods were not absorbed the inequality would became very high in the capitalist economies and the exports were falling short and there was a lot of speculation in the markets a lot of unemployment was there because there was no enough demand and the economy was not going forward and then a lot of banks were idle because there was no lending and borrowing going on in a frequent way so these are the reasons and coming to the policy instruments which were deployed to contain the great economic depression the policy instruments are firstly you know there was something called new deal new deal given by roosevelt okay what was what was the other countries doing is they were trying to make government basically see whatever in today's world we have seen 2008 depression or recession whatever was done in 2008 was done in 1929 also the means and ways of fighting a depression or economic depression are same so even if you don't remember for example in this question you don't remember anything of what were the policy instruments in 1929 if you simply can write what are the policy instruments in overcoming coming a depression you will still make lot of sense so you have to be smart in examination sometimes you may not know what is this new deal and all you can simply remember the people of roosevelt at that point of time and they say you can say what you will do when there is a economic recession you will infuse capital from the government side that is what new deal is about you will infuse money into the banks make them lend more and bring financial discipline in lending that is what they have done at that point of time okay and then they have supported poor people by giving certain freebies and also certain uh, important things because for them poverty was influencing a lot of people so they try to mitigate the poverty and they have given an action plan for the recovery from the great economic depression because uh, there was a lot of unemployment so they wanted to garner the employment so they have given certain subsidies to the industries to go and establish their units so that the employment is generated again and there was a long term measure to avoid the repeating of such instances in the world and also a proper security exchange department was created in america to avoid speculation and falling of similar markets with regard to farmers there was certain relief given immediately so that they could immediately get into the farm production and basically an industrial policy was formed and then social security was introduced labor laws were reformed and some heinous labor laws were removed conditions were bettered and the post world war 1 debts which had to be paid had had been postponed so all these were the policy instruments which put the entire world onto the again recovery pro process and the recovery was not overnight and it was a long way up to 1940s up to 1940s that is the world war 2 up to 1940s the recovery had been going on and again during world war 2 because of the demand for arms ammunition and so on the employment increased and the economy is boomed so that is the regarding the fighting of great economic depression clear yes sir so even without knowing the exact new deal and all you can still make lot of points yes or no do you agree sumanth and others do you agree even if you know the present day economy yes sir you can still make some good points in his answer 
so such questions you need not miss or you need not have in detail because it is all about economic fighting the economic recession right the instruments will be same yes national industrial recovery act social security act who is this hindu further many points whatever you are mentioning in this paragraphs na hindu try to make them as points here points approach will be good for these kind of answers because they are asking you what are the policy instruments you have to write one two three so on that is about it we have two days of break before we start the next module so please use the break to revise what we have discussed in the world history and also to prepare for the new module accordingly somehow in the last two or three classes you know after the break when we are meeting the participation is less in the classes and also with regard to the answers okay sumanth and all i am expecting regular answers from you people please write the answers okay lot of uh, girls also who are writing regularly are not writing i don't know the reason what might be the reason if you have anything genuine you can communicate to me in the personal window but if it is purely inertia i think you can come out of that inertia and start writing answers because this will be going on again so yeah let's meet in the next class good night